Welcome to Whips in the Dungeon 101.11. Today we're going to dig a little deeper into the Ford figure 8 and talk about dynamic throwing. And before we do that, because we're going to be cracking the whip, let's talk briefly about safety. I didn't talk about safety yesterday with the shape of the crack because we were talking static techniques. And static techniques, uh, safety's not as big an issue. But today, if you haven't cracked a whip before, find a pair of safety goggles or some way to protect your eye, your eyes. Uh, another good thing is to find a stiff brim hat. The stiff brim will protect your head. Wear long sleeves because you're going to hit yourself. I can't tell you how many times I've clipped my ear with a whip over the years. But briefly, let's look at yesterday. Yesterday, we looked at the shape of the crack and we discovered that it makes a U shape as it rolls out. Whether you're doing the bow and arrow or whether you're coming over the shoulder, it makes a U shape all the way out to its end and it ends with a light puff or a crack, depending on how hard it's thrown. When we move to dynamic throwing, let's first look at horizontal. Horizontal, we're really just turning that U shape sideways and it's going to roll out as it comes across and then we're going to recover it and it's going to roll out. But the shape of that crack hasn't changed. It's still a U shape and it's rolling out. We're just doing it horizontally. When we move overhand, if we were going to take a basic cracking or a sport cracking approach, the, 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 there's two shapes that we look at. One is the U shape from an overhand crack, just kind of throwing it like a baseball or a softball or any motion that comes overhand. That's that U shape rolling out. The other crack is an S shape. And there's a, a bunch of different names for this crack, circus crack, cattleman's crack. Because of the limitations of my ceiling, I'm going to have to turn this crack a little on an angle and we might call it a cutback. Uh, but watch, regardless of the name of the crack, watch the shape of the crack. It's going to make an S shape. See that S shape? And if I slow it down enough, I would contend that once the whip is moved through that S shape, as it rolls out, it ends with that U shape. So you could say there's only one shape to a crack, it's the U shape, or you could say that there's an S shape that transitions into a U shape finish. So we're going to break down that forward figure eight today. Let's go back briefly to our flogger. When we throw our flogger, and we have hours and hours of throwing the flogger on a forward figure eight, the goal is to lay the tails out and try to keep them together. Well, if you look, my tails, I'm having a little trouble keeping them together. So one of the ways we can help keep them together and add a little more emphasis to our throw is when I come around on the forehand side, I'm going to stall the whip. I'm going to stall all those tails out and I'm going to punch them through. Okay, so we're going to stall it and punch it. And if you watch those tails, when I stall it and punch it, they actually stay together in a nice tight pattern, much easier than when I was just swinging them. So if I'm doing my forward figure eight, visualize me standing in between two railroad tracks. I want to keep the whip outside the railroad track. Some of you have already secretly written to me and told me that you've been hitting yourself with the whip, trying to do the forward figure eight. You shouldn't hit yourself unless when it gets out there, you're jerking it back towards you. You want to make a nice rolling forward figure eight, recover the whip outside of the railroad tracks. Now, when I come around on the forehand side, I'm going to stall the whip. And we'll, oh, I did good. I got my cracker caught up. We want to stall the whip on the forehand side and let it roll forward. Now I'm not jerking it back toward myself. I'm not doing a, a towel crack. I'm coming right out of this forward figure eight and I'm stalling it and letting it roll forward. 
I'm recovering outside the railroad tracks on the backhand side, and every time it comes around to the forehand side, I'm stalling the whip and letting it roll forward. Because dynamically, that moment in time when we stall the whip and let it roll forward, we have a bow and arrow. Only it's continuous moving, it's still moving. So that's what I want you to practice on at home. Stalling on the forehand side and rolling that U shape forward. Not jerking it back towards you, but smoothly recovering outside the railroad tracks on the backhand side. Then when you can do that, switch and roll it out on the backhand side. <laughs> I'm having trouble demonstrating. There we go. Roll it out on the backhand side. And then when you can do that, stall it, forehand and backhand, forehand and backhand, forehand and backhand. That little puff's what we want. Today's key word is cat of nine tails.